Welcome engineers. My name is Travis IQ and I passed the Security Plus SY0-701 exam. I've also passed 601 and 501 and I will compare 701 to 601 so that you know what the differences are between the old exam and the new updated exam so you can pass this thing. Let's go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you three primary comparisons. I'm going to compare the two exams as a whole in terms of duration, context, and all of these things. I will compare and contrast all five exam objectives. They typically have five exam objectives, and both of these do. And then I'll give you three tips and tricks of interesting content that I found in my study material more was more heavily represented in the 701 exam content than it was in the 601 exam content. So join me in the void as we begin this discussion. First and foremost, we need to bring up the content itself for both of the exams. And I need to give you a quick description of the exams themselves. And so the exams, if you look at the 701 versus 601, they actually compare pretty favorably, right? So 701, 601, 90 questions, a uh, mix of multiple choice and performance based, 90 minutes, and then the requirements themselves. And I would say, you know, interestingly enough, I think that these are moderately accurate, although I think that if you spent a little bit more time in the field, or if you had, you know, a year of extremely intense experience in the field, you'd probably meet these objectives pretty easily. Two years of experience in IT, some hands-on technical with a technical information security and a broad knowledge of security concepts. Okay. So we agree that the general testability of these exams is kind of the same. Great. So that it hasn't deviated, which is good. Uh, but you wouldn't expect it to deviate in the sense that 701 and 601 are both designed to meet some of these DOD, DOD compliance specs, 8570 and these types of things. So, you know, it is what it is. The, the meat of the, the discussion comes when we actually compare the exam objectives. And if you notice, the exam objectives, in my opinion, from 501 to 601 didn't change that much. From 601 to 701, at least in their descriptions, did and their relative percentages did. And one of the more important things here is this inclusion. General security concepts. If you notice, if you look for this description here, general security concepts in the 601 exam objectives, threats, vulnerabilities, implementation, governance and risk, it isn't there. And that's not to say that this content wasn't within the scope of 601 and wasn't heavily tested. It actually was. And I like that they've included this in here. And so I, I don't want you to think that they're more heavily focusing on this or that it wasn't focused on in the previous exam if you didn't take the previous exam or any of the previous exams. It was, it just wasn't explicitly stated. What does this mean by general concepts? So what doesn't fall in here? Architecture, operation, program management, right? Things like, public key, private key encryption, asymmetric, symmetric encryption, some fundamentals around network infrastructure architecting. I know it says architecture here, but security architecture can be a little bit different when we're talking about application architecture and other things. So there's some basics of security, of architecting a security uh, pro program or including security concepts within the architecture, that there needs to be a baseline understanding there. And it always needed to be there. It's just explicitly stated here. And I actually really like that. When, when we always start the, our exam prep courses with the CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, availability, where does that stuff fall in this old domain? It doesn't. And I started every course with that. I still do. So I actually like this. That being said, how does this map to the old domains then. And I actually said, if you if you include <clears throat> one and two, right, general security concepts and threat and vulnerability mitigation, it really maps pretty well to attacks, threats, and vulnerabilities, and maybe falls, I would call it, I actually called it in my, in my notes here, one plus. So this, <clears throat> and this is 34%, right, maps to about 24% plus of the exam objectives. I think it probably match, maps to about 30% of what was focused on in the previous exam. So I would say, at least in my opinion, in terms of the study material, these two, right, general security concepts and threats, vulnerabilities, and mitigations represent about a third of the exam content, in my opinion. Uh, not, not in terms of the questions you will see, but in terms of the exam content as it's described by CompTIA in their exam details here. And I think it's, it's very representative of what, of what is in the realm of testability. And so general security concepts, confidentiality, integrity, availability, Encryption, encryption mechanisms, public key, private key infrastructures, these are all general security concepts. 
absolutely important. And then we think about the offensive side, threats, vulnerabilities, mitigations, CVE, CVSS. These are vulnerabilities and exposures, the vulnerability scoring system, um, oval, right? Some of these vulnerability communication languages or communicating vulnerabilities in a, in a clear and succinct way, right? Programmatic. Those all kind of fall in this category. I think they're extremely important. And there really wasn't a huge change from this to the, uh, from the old to the new. Now, I do think that it is valuable, and I, I would encourage you strongly to have a fundamental understanding of these, um, but I didn't want you to think that, oh, well, if you were studying for 601, then this new exam objective is going to change your studying mechanisms. It shouldn't, at least as far as this goes. Okay, so one and two, I agree maps to one. Two, uh, three, the security architecture, right? Architecting secure infrastructures. Um, an example of this that I thought was a little bit more heavily focused on, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, was things like zero trust. That's a, an, architect, a, an architecture, right? Or a mechanism of implementing security across your infrastructure, architecting it. So they said that security architecture is 18% here, and they, they bundled architecture and design in, in two, right? And so I would say they pulled architecture out, right? Uh, Zero Trust is a great example of this, and they m focused on it more heavily, right? Uh, firewall placement, different secure architectures in cloud versus on-prem, these types of things. And I would say that that is probably one of the more primary differences is that they pulled architecture out of the 2.0 exam objective and made it its own. And as a result, it is focused on a little bit more heavily. And I've given you a couple of examples of what I mean by architecture here. So I would say this is one of those primary exam objectives that you go, okay, well, where they included it here, I could say some of my 601 exam prep will work, and maybe I should start focusing on the specific examples of architecture like cloud architectures, like zero trust, like firewall placement, a little bit more heavily. We move down to security operations. Now, security operations being 28% and we look about we look at operations and incident response here right at 16% so if you're saying you know four kind of maps to four I would actually argue right that this is operations and incident response and I would actually include some of this implementation in here as well in operations and incident response because this is right, implementing is is part of secure operations and then you would say and then I would ask you you're like is it really Travis well I would ask you where else would it fall in here where else would implementation fall it doesn't really fall in general concepts it doesn't fall in vulnerability and mitigation it doesn't fall in program management and oversight it really is going to fall in the day-to-day -day operations and so what I think you're getting this bulk up of 28 percent in security operations is you're getting operations from from the objective four in 601 and you're getting implementation from objective three in 601 kind of being piled into the 4.0 objective and again I don't think that that's a problem I think that it's just something to recognize that I think that they're more evenly distributed than you might that they are more evenly distributed than you might think but it's just distributed differently from 601 to 701 that being said, right, if you think about implementation, for example, and we think about hardware implementations or nomenclature for hardware implementation, so things like security, information, and event management, right, SEAMs, we think about next-gen firewalls, NGFW is another, is another example of an abbreviation that you should know and understand, right? When we think about the implementation of these things, these, these security tools, where would they fall? They really would fall under operation. And now in, in 601, they would fall in implementation, and I think they fall under operation now. And that being said, if you look, right, 28%, if it's you know part of implementation and part of operations in here, I don't necessarily agree that it would have been focused on at a rate of 28% in the old exam objectives. I would say that it probably was getting focused on on a rate of maybe 20 to 25% is what security operations would have fallen into in these categories here if we kind of combine what operations means in these categories. And so what I'm saying is I think that security operations Things like understanding information and event management systems and their implementation, understanding next-gen firewall implementation is actually more heavily focused in this exam than it was in the previous exam. And so I would say that having a more fundamental understanding of those is, is important. And furthermore, I would also say that it actually is an accurate update for the test from CompTIA. Right? We use more seam-like products, seams or seam-like products. We use next-gen firewalls. We use 
adaptive APIs and cloud-based APIs for filtering of traffic. We use these operational tools, these advanced operational tools, more frequently now than we did three to five years ago. And we, and we use them even more frequently than we did five to seven years ago, if you're thinking about like the 501, where this stuff didn't really exist. So I think that this is a good update from them. Finally, we have program management and oversight. And now this is definitely a different set of terminology relative to the 5.0, governance, risk, and compliance. That being said, I think that program management and oversight is really just a renaming of risk and compliance with maybe some additional, additional focus on the managerial components. And so I think that it's actually taking 5.0, mapping it basically to the 5.0 objective from 601, and I would call the 701 5.0, I would call this basically 5.0 plus. And so what that means is we took governance, risk, and compliance, and so we talked about, we, we take you know PCI DSS compliance or FERPA compliance or these compliance mechanisms that were discussed in 601, some governance and some risk analysis, that is, that is included in program management. But there is also the component of management, right? Managing people in a security architecture that is also added here. And again, why do I say this? Because it really wouldn't be included in the previous four objectives, but it is included in the 601 objectives. And so this would be you know, managing people, roles, management, roles, these types of things. And so I've given you here the one through five objectives and my comparison of the 601, I hope that I've given you a couple of additional things to think about. And I wanted to end with my three tips and tricks and I've mentioned them throughout this video so far. Number one is, uh, you've heard me say this a few times, but it's a term called zero trust, right? Zero trust is a mechanism of security that we can deploy in our infrastructure that basically says, never trust, always validate. And now I'm gonna expand on the concept of zero trust in subsequent videos, but that's what this is in, in brief. And this is something that I think has been an updated emphasis on the exam from the study material that I have seen and something that I would, that I would focus on as a result of the new objectives. Number two, so this is one. Number two is cloud security concerns and mitigation. So as we're continuing to utilize the cloud in detail, right, or <laughs> ad nauseum, then cloud concerns become cloud security concerns, set concerns, become a larger focus. And as a result, the updated 601 to 701 exams have shown an updated focus on cloud security concerns, cloud-based APIs, cloud security brokers or cloud access security brokers or any of these intermediates that, that help facilitate cloud security as well as all of the security concerns of migration from on-prem to cloud. So I'll again, I will make an updated video on these as well, but this is in brief. Finally, and tip number three is, and something I mentioned in, in the video so far is understanding some of the more advanced security terms or some of the more, I would call them amorphous security terms. Some of those terms that don't really have the best definition you think and some things that, that are seem like, for example. So the terms are security information and event management tools, seem tools, and next gen firewalls, right? NGFW. And these are terms that I think are being used more frequently. And there are more products that are be that are being released that act like this, that either are seems explicitly or are seem like products. See Microsoft Sentinel, for example. Okay. And so I would focus on these three updates from 601 to 701, if you were studying for 601, or if you're studying for 701 as, an, as a new 701 studier and attempted passer of the exam, these are th three things that maybe you'll see in the content, but you would gloss over and I would focus on them in a little bit more detail. As is always the case, engineer, break stuff, have fun, and pass a 701 test. Put it in the comments when you pass it. Let's go.